Hello, Dutch apple cake this week. If you haven't been cooking much, make sure you have a go at this one. Dutch apple cake is lovely, really, really good. So follow the recipe. I'm going to show you now how to make it. Okay, folks, I have a uh, hundred of butter, 100 grams in there, and I've just zeroed my scales, and now I'm going to add some sugar. So I want 100 sugar, so there we go. Sugar goes quite quickly. So once I have 100 in there, I'm going to use a fork. Oh, I'm a little bit over, I know, that'll be all right. If you're a tiny bit over, that's okay, but if you're miles over, you'll need to take some sugar out. So, I've softened the butter a little bit using my microwave. I gave it uh, about 15 seconds just because it was cold out of the fridge and it makes it a lot harder. So use a fork and cream it together. So this works really well. And the reason we do this is it will help to aerate your mixture. And I know it seems hard to believe. You think, how is this getting air into it? But it does. And it'll give you a nice, light, fluffy texture. There is another way you could do this. You could just put all the ingredients in at once and mix it together. That's called the quick mix method. And that's fine, you're allowed to do that. But this is better. This is sort of a professional way, if you like. So, once you've done that, I've creamed the sugar and the um, fat there, lovely. You could use an electric whisk as well. You will find if you use an electric whisk, it almost goes a little bit white. And that's because you're putting more air into it. So an electric whisk is even better. So, beat the eggs with a fork next. So you'll need a small bowl for this part, and you want to beat a couple of eggs together. So here is my bowl, and bowl, and a couple of taps to break it, two thumbs in, twist. If you get any shell that comes off, you should be able to pick it out, but that looks pretty good. So here's a question, why am I beating my eggs in here. What's the point? Why would I do that? There's a little bit of something there. I'm just going to take that off. So why would I do that then? Well, the answer is, again, it's all about aeration. I'm trying to get as much air into this as possible. So I'm going to use a, a fork or a whisk, and I'm going to try and whisk up the eggs now. And once I've whisked these together, that's going to go into my mixture. So I'll cut back when we've done that. I've whisked my egg, I'm going to add it a little bit at a time, so I'll just pop a bit in and put it down, and just keep doing this until it's all mixed together. So there we go, there's the first bit, it's starting to come together, so keep adding it until it's all mixed in. Okay. So once you've done that, you'll be ready for your flour to be sifted in, so I will show you how to do that next. Fantastic, I've mixed those two together. So I have some baking powder here. Now this is a little bit optional. Um, you can add just a small amount, say about that much, maybe half a spoon, into your flour. So I've just done that. You can see it's quite a bright white color actually. So that will help your mixture rise a little bit more, but you don't want to go mad. If you put too much of this, it won't make it you know, much better. It won't make it sort of twice the mixture or anything. It will make it taste a little bit funny, almost a bit fizzy. So I recommend putting a teaspoon in or less. You don't want certainly more than a teaspoon. It will go crazy when you put it in the oven. Um, so I put that into my flour, but equally, if you don't have any baking powder, that's fine. Um, Self-raising flour contains baking powder already. So you're already putting some in anyway in your flour. So sieving, so another question, why am I sieving? What's the point? I think you probably know the answer. But again, it's aeration. I'm trying to get as much air into my cake mixture as possible. So I'm just going to tap that against my hands. Oh, it's going everywhere. I can tell you it's quite cloudy in here now. Oof, oof. Right, try and fold it in. So take the spoon and just pull it around and just gently try and trap as much of the mixture in as possible. So you can tip the bowl up on the side. Once you've done this, you should end up with a nice light looking mixture and you have trapped as much air in as possible so that when you cook it, the baking powder will puff up and what's already in the self-raising flour will do the same and then you'll end up with a really nice, light, fluffy 
cake. So that is the plan. So, onto the Right, that's bit. beautiful, nice and aerated. So now I have some cinnamon, and I have some brown sugar in here, and I have an apple that I've cored. So I've taken the middle out, and it's been cut. Don't ask me how I did that. It's magic. Oh, <laughs> right. Anyway, so that's going to go into our bowl, into our little tub. I've lined this with some greaseproof paper. Um, sorry, it's gonna be a bit hard to show you this, but try and take some spoons and put it into your tin like this and you want to fill it up so that it's oops, about halfway up so I'm going to keep on going until this is halfway up and then what I shall do is I'll put some apple in there a little bit of cinnamon as I say and some brown sugar and that will make our cake mixture so, Let's just put that in. So all of that's going to go in like that. There we go, lovely. Brilliant. And then I'll take the apple and I'll push some pieces in like this all the way along. You can lay them flat as well if you like, it's up to you so it looks like ribs. And then, perfect. And then a little bit of cinnamon, you can sprinkle that on the top. And you can also sprinkle a little bit of sugar as well. And that then will go into the oven for about 20 minutes until it's uh, golden brown and it's, and it's risen. I might be tempted to put a little bit less than this because I can see now that it's quite close to the edge. So it might puff up and over. So you probably want to go about halfway in your tin. No more than that because it does rise quite a bit. So I'll take a little bit out and I'll sprinkle the sugar and cinnamon, pop it in the oven. Right, I'll see you for the result. Hello, just taking this out of the oven. Mmm, smell that cinnamon. Well, you can't, but I can, it smells great. So, temperature probe, oh, 90, plenty. 75 is good, comes out clean. I've got a knife here, I've already tested it to be sure, but I'm just gonna do it again to show you. Pop it in, should come out clean like that, that's great. So, what I'll do now, I'll pop this on a, um, cooling rack just so that it can cool down for a little while because it's pretty hot 90 degrees that's too hot to eat so I'll leave it to cool down um, if you can there we go if you can you can remove the tray and you can leave it like that for about 20 minutes slice it up have it for your tea with uh, a hot drink and that is beautiful so yes I look forward to seeing you next time uh, that was the Dutch apple cake hope you've enjoyed it bye for now